Yes, my name is Eagle Pingle. Eagle, 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 pingle. Yes, my name is Eagle Pingle. Eagle, pingle, eagle, eagle. Maka paka aka waka mika maka moo. Maka paka apa yaka ika aka oo. Hum dum maka pang in ang oo. Maka paka aka waka mika maka moo. Upsy daisy here I come. I'm the only upsy one. I'm the only daisy too. Ipsy upsy daisy do. Omli boo tomli boo knock on the door. Omli boo tomli boo sit on the floor. Omli boo tomli boo here is my nose. Omli boo tomli boo that's how it goes. Yes, my name is Eagle. Maka paka aka waka mika. Upsy daisy, here I come. Maka paka aka Megan, stop! Stop! What? What is it? You're doing it again! Oh. Hi, I'm Megs from James and Megs, and welcome to this week's vlog. In the Night Garden. Reviewed. So recently, Eloise has become really interested in a children's TV show called In the Night Garden. And like all new parents, we have questions. So today, we're going to do a bit of a review about In the Night Garden, and Megan's going to talk a little bit more about what it's all about. And what better place to do that than our actual garden? Not like we can go anywhere at the moment. Now, before we get started, Megan, do you want to outline what it's all about? Good idea, James. So basically, In the Night Garden is a programme that's set in a garden slash woodland forest area where a small group of creatures meet up together to have simple yet fun adventures. Basically, Iggle Piggle travels there by boat, meets up with Maka Paka, Upsy Daisy, the Tomley Boos, the Ponty Pines, the Wattingers, the Hahoos, and they all have a little song and dance before they read a story and they go to sleep. Is that the sound of the sparrows I hear? It's the sound of a very confused husband. Can you slow down a little bit? and talk through the characters individually, please. Yeah, I can do that. Okay then, so we have Iggle Piggle, a strange blue creature that's somehow obsessed with their red blankets. They travel across the ocean via boat to the night garden and they don't like to go to sleep when they're told to. Makapaka, a small potato-like creature that is still somehow loved and is endearing to children everywhere. They're obsessed with piling up stones and using a sponge and soap to wash everyone's faces. Upsy Daisy, a girl who likes to carry her bed everywhere and likes to kiss everything in the garden. May or may not be in a relationship with Iggle Piggle based on how much they hold hands and kiss each other. The Tombly Boos. A group of characters that look like little triplet babies. When they first leave the house, their trousers are always on the line, so I can only assume that they're naked when you first see them in the show. They also seem to have an elastic problem with their trousers because they keep falling down all the time. The Ponty Pines. There's Mr. and Mrs. Pontypine, and they clearly don't have a TV in their house because they also have eight children. They also speak in a really strange language consisting of squeaks and fart sounds. The Wattingers, next door neighbors of Mr. and Mrs. Pontypine. They clearly don't have a TV in their house either because Mr. and Mrs. Wattinger also have eight children. They speak in the same squeaky farty language as the Pontypines, yet they somehow get less screen time. The Harhoos, giant inflates balls of a stuff of nightmares. Enough said. The Titifers. <laughs> stop it. You know, it sort of sounds like... Just stop it. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, the Titifers. They're a group of exotic looking birds that just sit around on the trees and make chirping sounds that command the other characters to either perform a ritualistic dance around the gazebo or finally fall asleep. Is that it? Depends. You could also count the Ninky Nonk, a multicolored train that somehow defies the laws of size, constancy and gravity. And there's also the Pinky Ponk, an obscure looking blimp with two side boobs at either end that has a habit of constantly farting as it flies along in the sky. Is that it? Yes, that's it. It's quite a lot to take in, especially for me. Yeah, and I think that's one of the criticisms I have about In the Night Garden. For kids, it's not so bad, but for parents, they have to remember who all those characters are, and then they actually have to remember who is who. Now, that's a lot to take in, and it's easier said than done. Do you think you can honestly say who is who? Uh, maybe guess. 
Macapaca? No. Tombly Boo? No. <laughs> That's definitely a pinky bonk. Let's move on. So that in itself is confusing. But there are a lot of other things about In the Night Garden that are confusing too. In fact, there are a lot of things in that programme that cause plot holes for me as a parent. For example, Iggle Piggle gets there by boat, but where is the water surrounding the forest area? Where is the boat? Why do they show exotic looking birds that clearly aren't acclimatised to that forest climate? How come the Ninky Nonk is so much smaller than all the other characters, yet they can still somehow fit in it without any problems? Assuming the Tombly Boos are children, why is Macapaca so much smaller than them? Are Upsy Daisy and Niggle Piggle in a relationship? Why doesn't it look like nighttime in the garden when it's supposed to be set at night? Why does Macapaca insist on piling up so many stones? What problem do the other characters have with the Wattingers that means they get less screen time than everyone else? Stop. I, I definitely agree. It's very confusing. But Eloise likes it. There's got to be some good things about this show. I think you're right about that. And considering the programme only aired from 2007 to 2009, and that children everywhere still really love it, it clearly has some longevity to it. And I think it's important to talk about why that is. Well, the songs are quite catchy. Yeah, that is true. Not just for kids, but for parents as well. I mean, I have heard you sing in the Eagle Piggle song to yourself. I don't know what you're on about. And it is an incredibly colourful programme. And along with the strange sound in the show, such as Iggle Piggle oh. squeak and the farty squeaky language of the Ponty Pines and the Wattingers, clearly it must be trying to do something to help children's development. But that's clearly intentional, because there's evidence out there to suggest that a lot of thought went into making the programme. An article written by Professor Warren Lenny in 2018 suggested that over an 18-month period before the show first aired, children and their parents watched it together to ensure for the producers that the environment being created was a safe one for the children to watch before bedtime. Not only that, they wanted to ensure that the sounds being made by the characters mimicked the actual sounds made by children during their own speech development. And other studies have shown how children use what they know about in the night garden to help with their own emerging role-playing skills. For example, by maybe putting their own Iggle Piggle soft toy to bed before them, because they know that Iggle Piggle doesn't go to bed in the show. That's pretty cool. I mean, just in the short time that Eloise has been watching in the night garden, I think she's really come forward with her development. She's been waving at Maka Packer whenever he comes up on screen, and even the other day she did her first clap in response to Maka Packer. Mm. Maka Packer. <laughs> so I do think she's picking up some communication skills from watching the program. Absolutely. And as a parent, even if you don't remember all of the names of the characters, like me, when Eloise or your baby is having a tantrum, putting it on the background is a great way to calm them down. Oh yeah, and if you're having a rough day as a parent, it can really make the difference between letting yourself have that quick break and losing that last bit, little bit of patience that you have. So Megan, what rating would you give In the Night Garden? So to summarise my thoughts on In the Night Garden, yes, there are some logical problems with it, and there are some confusing character names that are hard for parents to keep up with. But at the same time, it does a really good job of helping with child development. The music is pretty catchy, and it does give us as parents the chance to relax when tensions are high with Eloise. The fact that it's still popular 12 years after it aired is really a testament to how good it is. So I'm going to give In the Night Garden five stars out of five. I've been James. And I've been Megs, and we've been James and Megs. If you like what you've seen today, please consider liking this video, leaving a comment down below to tell us your thoughts on In the Night Garden or the video itself, and please consider subscribing to this channel to see our everyday goings on and our development, our journey as filmmakers, new YouTube vloggers, and new parents. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.